Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, this is going to be the last segment in this part of this build series. And this is going to be putting these two amps that are identical except for the cathode resistor is 270 on one of them and it's 330 on the other. And we're going to see what the difference between the two is on the audio analyzer suite. And then I'm going to do like a final, spend some time listening to it with a follow-up video. I did plug these in and give a quick listen to them. And the channel with a 270 ohm resistor sounds richer to me. And the one with the 330 ohm sounds a little brighter. And I'm not sure exactly, you know, what's going on. We'll see what the audio analyzer suite shows and see if what I'm hearing actually is visible and measurable when we're comparing the two amplifiers. So let's get to it. Okay, so I've got both the amps plugged in to the audio analyzer suite. And we've got it set up so we can test both monoblocks at the same time for the channel one and channel two. The channel two or the blue channel is the one with the 270 ohm resistor that's biasing the tubes hotter. And then channel one is the channel that's biasing the tubes a little colder. So the first test we're gonna run is the THD versus power. And let's run it on both channels for the first pull. And we're gonna stop at 5% distortion. So. Here we go. And they start off the same, but then quickly the channel that's biased hotter has less distortion. And it's making more power, which we'll get into in a minute. But let's check first watt. Everybody says first watt's the most important. You've got 0.369, like basically 0.37% distortion on the colder running tube, and then the hotter bias tube is 0.227. So, not sure that would even really be that audible, but it is an improvement. And then when we get up here to at 1% distortion, we're getting 8 watts. And one of them is at 1% distortion, and the other one is at 0.7. So to really see the power, we're going to run these individually. So let's do the colder running tube. And by colder, I just mean cooler bias. It's running at less percent of its maximum. And we'll let this run through. There's Dolly drinking in the background. Okay, so like we saw at 1% distortion, we got 8 watts. And then at 2% distortion, which is kind of where I call the limit on power. From there, you're getting into heavy clipping. And on a scope, we may already be seeing some pretty heavy clipping. But we're seeing 9.4 watts. So... Now we're going to do the channel 2, which is the monoblock that has the 270 ohm resistor in it versus the 330. So we come over here at 1% distortion. 12 watts. It's got four more watts or 50% more power because remember it was eight watts. So if it's making four more watts at the same distortion level, that's 50% more output at the same distortion level. 
and then if we go to 2%, we got 13 watts. Now, probably don't want to be listening to it at that level because you can see the distortion is just turned straight up at this point. But I can legit say this amp is making 12 to 13 watts of power without any issues whatsoever. There's 1.5% distortion and it's 13 watts. And at 1%, you got 12 watts. So with it biased just a little bit hotter, it goes from an 8 watt to a 12 watt amp. And that also means that when you're running it at 8 watts, which is right along in here, you're at only, you're less than three quarters of a percent of distortion, and you've got headroom on each side of it without getting into distortion. And so, clearly to me, running this amp at 270 ohms and letting it just run the tubes hot is the way this thing's really going to sing. So the next thing I want to look at is the frequency response. And we're going to pull that on both channels. To me, this is where, if we see a difference here, this is going to be what you're really going to hear. And on the bottom end, they look pretty much the same. The only reason the blue one is over the red one is it's making a little more power at every level. But right here where they cross over, over one, just a little over 1K, what is that? 13, 1,500, 1 1.5K where they cross over. Here's that brightness that I was saying I was seeing on this amp when I tested it originally with a 330 ohm resistor. Look how much flatter the frequency response is on this blue line. When it gets up here in the, you know, there's 10K, it's still at almost the exact same volume level as it is down here at 40 hertz. There's 30. I mean, that is really nice looking. I can promise you this channel that has the lower resistor in it, it's going to sound bright compared to the channel that doesn't. Which, you know, maybe how you want to hear it. Maybe your speakers aren't real bright and they need, you know, some lift on the top end. So realize you can tune the tone of this amp by changing that cathode resistor. And if you don't need 8 watts of power, let's say you only need 5, then maybe if you've got some dull sounding speakers, it might sound better with 330 ohm resistors in it. But with my clip speakers, I'm pretty sure it's going to sound better with the hotter resistor in it or with the 270 ohm resistor where it runs the tubes a little closer to their max. So the last thing we want to do is look at the distortion versus frequency and see if we see anything odd going on there. And we're going to run this at, let's go ahead and run this at 8 watts to start with. Now one of the things confusing about these EL84 tubes is some people rate them at 12 watts and then some people rate them at 14 watts. And I think if you're running like the JJ tubes, you probably want to consider a 12 watt tube. But I believe that if you're running some of the higher qualities, maybe some new old stock or these gold lion ones, that you can get away with rating it as a 14 watt tube. So anyway, that said, with the 330 ohm resistor at 12 watts, it's being run at 90%. If it's a 14 watt tube, it's at 78%. With the 270 ohm resistor, rating it at 12 watts, we're running it at 95% of its dissipation. And if we rate it at 14 watts, it's running at 82%. So if you're using some of the lower quality tubes, I would be real careful about running it with this 270 ohm resistor because I'm not sure how long they'll survive. But I feel like running these gold lion tubes or if you're running some new old stock tubes that 
unfortunately have gotten stupid expensive. Definitely feel you can get away with these 270 ohm cathode resistors. So as we look at the frequency versus distortion curve, on the low end, we've got a slight bit more distortion out of the hotter running tube. But once you cross over about 500 hertz, higher current bias tube or the 270 ohm resistor monoblock, as you can see, it's got a half a percent distortion versus 1% on the other channel. And all the way up to you know, higher frequencies here, here's 5K, it's definitely got an advantage. And then they cross over again right on the top end. So I think overall, in the range where distortion's really going to be audible, like in the vocal range, the higher bias tube has got a clear advantage here that should be audible. So anyway, that kind of shows you know, what I'm seeing out of these two monoblocks. But the main difference to me that I'm seeing is on this right here where we're getting a lot flatter frequency response when we're running the tube at 270 ohm cathode instead of 330. And then obviously we're getting way more power, which I'm shocked it's that much different, that we're only running the tube a few percentage points hotter and it's making almost twice the power. Well, I have to say, I'm shocked at what a major difference that little bit of bias change made. And like I've said before, when I was doing all my SE amp work, I kept finding over and over again that the amplifiers just sounded better when I was running the tubes at almost the maximum that this allowed for them. And this is no exception. And now it makes sense why amps like the ST35 and some of the other amps from back in the day that ran these tubes, ran them way over spec, and people just lived with them eating tubes was because they just sound better. And the main thing that shocked me was how it changed the tonal curve or the frequency response curve on the amp. The lower biased one definitely sounded brighter, like I said at the start of the video, but you could see it on the audio analyzer suite frequency curve that the highs were louder in relation to the lows. And it's hard to say if the lower bias made the highs brighter or if the higher current brought the lows up, which I think is the case, because it's really only showing you the difference between the two. The other interesting thing was that running more current through the tube didn't necessarily make it have more gain. It just gave it more headroom so that when you put more input into it or turn the volume up with a higher gain preamp or whatever you're using to drive it with, that it was able to take it and make more power. And to be able to go from 8 watts to basically 12 and a half watts, almost 13 watts, off just 5% more bias or current running through the tube, I, I would have never guessed that. And I was thinking, is there some sort of anomaly thing going on here? Is this like really not what's going on? So off camera, on the other monoblock, I went in and changed the resistors to 270 ohms so they were the same. Check the voltages. All the voltages are the same. Put them on the audio analyzer suite. Mirror images of each other. They make the exact same little over 12 and a half watts of power now. And so I have to say, guys, I mean, I've watched people, you know, that are building these simple push-pull, even if you're doing it with a circuit board, and they're concerned about the tubes being biased too hot. They're putting... 300, 330 ohm resistors in them to, to calm them down. Don't do it. It's going to hurt the way the amp sounds. They sound better biased hot. So time will tell how long these tubes last running like this. Again, I don't think I would do this with like JJ tubes, but if you're running some of these gold lines or some of the higher you know, quality EL84s, I think you'll be fine. And it definitely sounds better. So 
for now, I'm done with this project, and I think they turned out great. I think they look awesome, these mirror copies of each other. But these are going to be something that I do a lot of testing of theories and stuff on. In the future, you will see these again on my channel. Going to convert them to either fixed bias or that enhanced bias thing that Dave G on Audio Karma talks about using a voltage regulator to control the cathode current on the amps. And so we may try that first and then you know, set up an actual fixed bias setup on it to see how those different things affect the power. I'd like to try to milk 17 watts each out of these things like an ST35 got. And I'm pretty sure that that's within the realms of possibilities. But for now, need to get working on the R8. Got some other projects, probably want to build the 2A3. Some other things I've talked about doing on the channel. So for now, these are done. Before the first of the year, I'll try to get the schematic as these are built and tested up on my website and try to get a bomb together. Bombs are just so time consuming. I, I mean, you guys know when you try to search for the parts, how time consuming that is and why you want me to do that for you, but I'll try to do it. But, you know, that's a probably three or four hour job trying to put a bomb together for one of these amps. So anyway, Hope you're enjoying this content. Hope you enjoyed this series. Hope some of you guys build these little lamps. Again, if you're not comfortable doing point to point, and this looks a little over your head, there's the circuit board that's in the description from Tube Labs that makes this a lot easier. At some point in the future, I may even try doing the circuit board version of this little amp and see how that sounds compared to these point to point wired monoblocks. So, who knows? Don't want to get too sidetracked down this rabbit hole, though, because we've got tons of other cool stuff to do next year, and I really want to keep the projects rolling through and so y'all can enjoy this content. So anyway, sub to the channel, like the video, and we'll see you soon. Have a nice day.